that Disneyism is. Um, I think the the importance of the new mathematical imagination is that uh, in the old sort of linear equations of modernism and the mathematics that came out of the Renaissance, you could have the notion of an elite, Darwin, Marx, and Freud, articulating an ideology that then would be inflicted on the mass. And so it was very much a pie-shaped kind of thing, center and periphery. You start with Marx and you end up with Stalin or whatever. Uh, I think now in, in the transformation of our mathematical imagination of space from Poincaré to chaos dynamics, uh, that's no longer adequate and that there is a there is a reimagination of the world in music and mathematics where the solvent, what was the word, coagulant, is more a convergence of music and mathematics that in old, in old cosmologies would be called angelic. I, for example, am totally fascinated with animism and angelology as topological forms. Yeah, that certainly, I was fascinated when I read that as a kid in high school, yeah. And certainly I've lived in Switzerland, so I've been around the sort of echoes of, you know, of Hesse and, and the bead game. But there again, he crystallized it and tried to create the elitist academy. And the actual bead game and the masters of the bead game would not be in a, in a, in a utopian community that was the new cloister but would be a distributive lattice spread throughout the planet and would not be crystallized into a, into a single elite. So that's why in a lot of the early political writings I tried to uh, articulate separating authority from power. But uh, that in some sense was responsible for our marginalization and why you know, uh, think tanks were more effective and Lindisfarne was more ineffective. But may, who knows, maybe in a hundred years it would be different, but we are definitely the long ways. Last one and then we'll call it a a night? Yes, sir. Uh, one thing you mentioned was uh, you said Joseph Campbell was archaic uh, with respect to the MTV generation. And uh, one thing you didn't mention or I didn't hear it uh, was anything about the possibility of, uh, I think, economic depression somewhere down the road. And, and I wondered if, if you considered the possibility of economic catastrophe to be out of the question, and, and if not, then that might be the kind of Joseph Campbell sort of crisis that would that would face the MTV generation in terms of making their whole technological views of suffering as a as an environment. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the uh, that's a possibility as we're we're all involved in a, co a common planetary narrative. Uh, in the chapter on Disney, there is actually a discussion of the depression and its role to Disneyism. Uh, one of the things that has blown my mind in Fernand Brodel's three-volume history of the modern world is his uh, dynamical uh, sense where he said the signal of the transfer of the capital of the world economy from London to New York was the crash of 1929. And when you look at all that, New York, everything, you know, you go to a New York apartment with the hexagonal tiles in the bathroom and the sinks, everything is built in the 30s. And the whole sensibility of New York is Cole Porter and the 30s, the Empire State Building, <coughs> Rockefeller Center. It was all built in the Depression. New York became the capital of the world economy through the Depression. So how one interprets what is happening in a Depression, it's a catastrophe bifurcation, but it may actually be the, the signal of a, the transfer from one attractor to another, and it may be much more, quote, positive than we would tend to think of. So that those who can play the game and the way that DuPont played the game in the Depression, they bought up all GM stock. And so a Depression is a way for getting rid of, you know, yuppies and overextended people and, and larger people buying up all the, you know, the playing field. So what constitutes a Depression is a really interesting uh, question. So from 29 to 87, you had New York as the capital of the world economy. And then you had the crash of 87, which was larger in volume than 29, and it signaled the impact of, a, of program electronic trading and personal computers and the software as the way in which people were playing the game. So it couldn't be controlled or monitored in the same way. So it signaled that now the world economy was a distributive lattice between Hong Kong, Singapore, Frankfurt, and it was the scene of the action was not Wall Street anymore. And a chaotic attractor was totally unpredictable and had, new, had a new state space, which was not Wall Street but was the planet. So 87 signaled the end of New York as the capital of the world economy. Now my response to that is to say, therefore, we need to reincarnate New York. 
you know, the Eiffel Tower captured Paris at its time in the Great Fair, and the Empire State Building captured New York and incarnated it as the capital of the world economy. Now I'm trying to work with all these scientists and architects to reincarnate it in terms of bringing art, science, and religion together in the biosphere, resurrecting the Gothic Cathedral in a whole new post-historic sort of way as what the future of New York is supposed to be in this, you know, post uh, New York kind of world. But New York is very depressed. There's a hemorrhage of capital to Texas, and uh, it just may not, you know, be able to make it. And the amount of, you know, just the fabric of the disintegration of subways, public transportation, homeless, and the rest of it, I mean, it is really, New York is already a catastrophe. You don't have to wait, you know, for the future. I mean, it's just every day. They're just getting all the money. Except they're recreating L.A. They've got gridlock on Sunday for people driving to church, and uh, it's uh, you know it, they're making all the mistakes of Los Angeles in the 50s. But they have a lot of money. A lot of the corporations are going, and they're creating medieval enclosed um, complexes where the 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 corporation executives and their wives, like I think American Airlines moved to Dallas. Uh, they're all enclosed in these safe neighborhoods, and they don't have to deal with New York, and and so they're moving out there, but the, the services and the quality of life and the intellectual cultural level is, I mean, I don't want to move to Dallas. I mean, <laughs> I'll hang in there with New York, you know, bad as it is. So far. Okay. Thank you very much.